In the 1870s and 80s, Jesse James robs a bank, three stagecoaches, and three trains. Barbed wire is patented, which will end the open ranges of the American West. Levi Strauss markets blue jeans with copper rivets, price $13.50 for 12 jeans. Thomas Edison patents the incandescent light bulb. And the public is wild about the coming of the Venus Transit. Even a march is composed by John Philip Sousa in honor of the event. Scientists travel to various locations around the globe to witness the transit of Venus. One such mission went to Hawaii on September 9, 1874, nearly a century after Captain Cook had charted Hawaii, a ship from England, HMS Scout, sailed into Honolulu Harbor, carrying an expedition of seven astronomers. The mission of the expedition was, as Captain Cook's had been in 1769, to observe a rare transit of Venus across the sun for the purpose of better determining the value of the astronomical unit and, thereby, the absolute scale of the solar system. Scientists had determined that Hawaii was an important place to observe the transit. Its island location offered an unobstructed 360-degree view of the stars, and the position of Hawaii near the equator afforded one of the best views of Venus. The team in Hawaii was well equipped. The astronomical apparatus sent to the islands included three transit instruments, more than half a dozen telescopes, clocks, chronometers, compasses, micrometers, and a photoheliograph. The Hawaiians under their king Kalakoa welcomed the expedition and provided sites and living quarters to the scientific community. The method of observing the transit was to record the precise times that the edges of the planet touched the edges of the sun, twice as the planet touched the left side of the sun, and twice as the planet touched the right-hand side of the sun. The times between points A and B and points C and D would take about 20 minutes. From these points, as viewed from different positions on Earth, would be derived the distance of Earth to Venus. From this number would be applied the ratios set down by Kepler, and from the results of those ratios would derive the answer to which scientists had long waited, one astronomical unit. On December 8, 1874, the rain clouds withdrew, the sun shone, and useful observations were obtained at two of the three observing stations at Honolulu and Waimea. In England, the transit's aftermath included the laborious efforts to analyze the data and publish the results, an effort that encompassed many years. The American astronomer Simon Newcomb, formerly of the Naval Observatory, combined the data from the transits of 1874 and 1882 and numerous other kinds of measurements. Also, he looked at the orbital drift of the two planets and he examined the shift in each of the observation points from Earth's rotation. From these calculations, he derived a value of 149.59 million kilometers for the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The answer was found. Earth's place within our solar system was confirmed to within 1 million kilometers of the value used today, as found through modern-day satellites and radar. Today we know how vast our galaxy is and how tiny our place is in it. The majestic vision of the stars as seen by new images recorded by the Hubble Space Telescope beckon to the skies. As we see these images, scientists wonder again, how large is the universe? Someday, a scientific mind and a team of dedicated observers will answer that question too.